Welcome back to day two of the Traeger Rebuild. Let's get into this. Thanks for watching. As you can see, I've been sanding on this thing. I uh, got a lot of that rust off there. Still got a little ways to go. Sanding out my area where I'm gonna put down my new barbecue seal. I'm gonna go ahead and get that sanded the rest of the way down to metal, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paint it with my paint I purchased yesterday for this project, which is going to be 2000 degree heat resistant primer. Uh, that's the final color is going to be. Some of you know my car is destroyer gray and this is the closest they had. Um, I do have another color I'm thinking about putting on the lid. We'll see if I decide to or not. I may do a test spot. I want to see if this gets a little darker, but just to give a little bit of contrast. So I've been sanding away here. Put a little light on this. So I started sanding on that almost down to metal. As you can see, it opens up a lot when you break the uh, bubbled paint off there. But definitely getting everything scuffed up so we can get it ready for paint. I decided I'm going to leave the hopper, except for the lid. And as you can see, I got all this sanded down. It's nice and smooth between the paint and where the paint peeled. But I got that scuffed. And then right now, as you can see, I took off the hinges for the lid. I got to level those out because I did it outside one-handed and obviously didn't get a level. So, as you can see, I took off the lid. The lid is pretty simple. There's two Phillips head here, two Phillips head here, and there's actually, if I take the screw out, I'll show you right here. This is actually popped into the metal so you don't have to worry about a nut falling off the back of it. Uh, at least on this older model, I know this was, uh, from my research, oddly enough, this was a USA made Traeger. Um, so it's old. Like I said, I knew it was old, but after doing some research, it's pretty darn old. Um, I guess Traeger was sold um, to China on 2010, and then Joe Traeger actually went over to uh, the, I think it's Donson Company and helped create Pit Boss, and he ended up getting sued over it, so that's kind of a fun little nugget of info. So you Pit Boss guys, you kind of got a Traeger, hate to say it, but it's pretty much the same thing with Joe Traeger having helped work on it. All right, back to the action. Okay, so I don't need to do this, but since I'm making an educational video on uh, Rebuild and how this thing works, like I said, I've already changed out the controller, uh, they're very simple. There's just a screw at the top and bottom to take them out. But I kind of wanted to show you what wires you have behind there and where they go. It's really simple. As long as you have the old one connected, you can figure out what the new ones do. So let me hop under here and we'll take a look. Let me put some light on this. All right. So we have our fan, which as you can see, I've already replaced the fan. This is the main one that you hear when you turn it on and that's the one you're hearing right here. So that is our orange wires, which connects right here on this new controller I have, which is orange and white with another white. And then if you look in here, we have this one that connects to, from the controller to this little fan on the outside here. Well, that's a little loose. Should probably tighten that. And it connects into the main uh, portion of the controller that goes to the auger feed. That's uh, when your your uh, temperature sensor, which since I'm saying that, oh, sorry about moving around. It's kind of hard to do this. Your temperature sensor, which is purple and white, connects here and feeds up in through. And that will, this, I'm oh, sorry, this is your heat rod. This is your heat rod. Uh, purple and white is your heat rod. I stand corrected. 
the little guys here that connects right there on your board, that is your temperature sensor, which if you look, if I pull on this, you can see it right there. That goes to your temperature sensor, which is located there. So the little two on the board, temperature sensor. These two here, purple and white, go to your heat rod. These two here are for your fan. And the black one here is what connects to your auger. You can see the auger motor and everything right here. So that is the setup of where the wires go when connecting your controller. Like I said, I didn't have to do this, but I want to make sure I uh, include as much as I can to help educate people who've not taken one of these apart. So it's time to make the gasket. I got some, uh, this is some gasket stuff you buy at uh, the auto parts store. Real high temp stuff. Uh, I've looked at a whole bunch of different information and this stuff will withstand up to close to 2000 degrees. I believe it was 1500 or something like that, which I know that uh, grill cannot reach. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a gasket out of this. Just take our little flue here, set it down on there. I'm gonna trace it out with that Sharpie and cut it out. Be right back. Okay, so I've got it marked out here. The inside, I just took a roll of duct tape, found where the dirt was, lined it up around there. I'm gonna cut it out towards the center of this and then I'll just go ahead and trim it just a little bit to the outside there and uh, make sure we have that opening big enough. Be right back. Okay, so there's my gasket. I just took and put it on here, put the bolts kind of in there, and then I took my razor knife and just went around the outside edge. We're good to go. Okay, got this kind of pre-sanded still working on it but I uh, just wanted to give you a little tip for if you want to leave your badge on I just took some uh, duct tape here the super strong stuff and uh, just put it on top of there and then took an exacto knife and went around all the little mountains so if you want to hold on to that without having to take it off because it's a pain to get off uh, that's a good idea to do it Go. All right, it's time to degrease this thing and I am just going to use some Dawn soap and a little bit of water. I'm going to take this outside where it's 112, scrub her down, get it ready for paint. Okay, so I've primed and painted the cover for the hopper and first coat on our lid here. I think it's going to come out pretty good. So I got the lid done. Uh, this is two coats of that. You can still see a little bit of where that beer can was sitting, but I actually may highlight that and put a sticker, put beer here. But um, yeah, here's an idea of what it's gonna look like uh, for that color. That's gonna be against that destroyer gray, so starting to make progress. All right, y'all. So here's where I'm gonna end today's video. Uh, yeah, it's been a long day, a lot of sanding, a lot of prepping to get to this point. Yes, I could not cover up the Mopar symbol. And uh, we'll see what I do with that later. But I uh, just want to give you uh, another look at how far I got today. Whew, it's hot. It's way hot out here. And I should be used to it living here. But 
So here's the back. And yes, I'm painting it in the shade. So that's where we're at right now. I'm gonna clean up them wheels and uh, I already showed you the lid and the hopper cover. And once I get uh, everything dried up and cured, I'll go ahead and uh, pop those babies back on there. I appreciate you guys so much. If you can hit that subscribe button, that helps me out huge. Uh, it keeps me going to make more of these videos. And since I'm not working, uh, I'm really looking forward to hitting the 1K mark there so I can at least make a couple bucks for gas. But I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. Thank you. We'll see you next time.